in this video we're going to be taking a look at some past paper questions from the unit 3 topic on the IGCSE biology curriculum. Don't forget to pause the video, have a go at the questions yourself and then check your answers with the answers I will be putting on the screen. Let's get into question 1. The diagram shows the movement of molecules inside and outside of the cell. Now the question says state the letters that represent the movement of active transport and diffusion. So first of all, we can quickly write down that active transport is from a low concentrated area to high concentrated area, and diffusion is from high to low. From this piece of information, we know that Y and Z is moving from a low to high concentrated area, which means it must be active transport. Similarly, W and X are going from a high to low concentrated area, so that has to be diffusion. The second question shows two cells. Diagram 1 shows a cell that has been placed in a solution of glucose for 15 minutes. Diagram 2 shows an appearance of the cell after 15 minutes in distilled water. The question says, explain why the plant cell changed when it was placed in distilled water. Now you're expected to recognise that the diagram 2 cell has enlarged and the size has got bigger. Now we need to explain how that has happened. Firstly, the diagram 2 cell was placed in distilled water. So we're probably going to be talking about water and water potential. So we can say that water moves inside the cell by osmosis through a partially permeable membrane. And this is because the water potential inside the cell is a lot lower than the environment outside, which is the distilled water. Each one of these bullet points gets you one mark in the exam. The next question is asking us to define the term active transport. Now this is the net movement of particles through a cell membrane from a region of lower to higher concentration. It also requires energy from respiration to make this happen. The question below says, state the name of the outer part of an animal cell that substance is moved through. Well, this is just the cell membrane. This question gives us a lot of information about the umbilical artery and the umbilical cord. It says, state the name of the process that allows substances to move down a concentration gradient across the placenta. Now, down a concentration gradient means from high to low, so that means the answer is diffusion. The next question is asking us to describe how salts are reabsorbed against a concentration gradient. Against means from low to high concentrated areas. So that means it must be by active transport, so from a low to high concentrated area, through a cell membrane using protein pumps or channels, and then it uses energy from respiration. For this question, we need to be able to give a tick or a cross depending on if we think it's true or false. The first statement states that it must involve a partially permeable membrane. Well, for diffusion, this isn't true because gases can diffuse in a room where there's no permeable membrane. For osmosis, this is true, however. The second one involves the movement of gases and solutes. For diffusion, this is true. This is false for osmosis because osmosis is only talking about the movement of water molecules. The third one is a result of the random movement of particles. Well, this is true for both. So when we talk about the movement, we're talking about the net movement, the overall movement. But really, it's just a random movement of particles. The last one says requires energy from respiration. Now, neither of these require energy, only active transport. This question is asking us to define the term diffusion. Well, this is a nice and simple one, hopefully. So it's just the net movement of particles from a high to low concentrated area. The last question for this video gives us a part of the body and then the direction of diffusion. So the first one is the lungs, and it says from the air in the alveolus to the red blood cells. Well, this is either oxygen or carbon dioxide. Because it's from the alveolus to the red blood cell, it has to be oxygen. The second one is the small intestine, and the direction is from the villi to the blood in the capillary. We need to think about what nutrients we might need to absorb, so we can say glucose or amino acids. The last one is talking about the biceps, and the direction is from the muscle cell to the blood in the capillary. Now again, this could be either oxygen or carbon dioxide, but because it's from the muscle to the blood, then it's carbon dioxide. 
this is going to be the end of the video. If you have found it useful, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.